Water simulations famously suck. Takes forever to bake, takes forever to render, and then you have to redo all the stuff again sometimes, and it, it's just a disaster. But what about water sims with geometry nodes? I'm Jordan Eden, this is Jham 3 d and let's check this out. Okay, so today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make something like this within geometry nodes. You can see there's this cube, and it and it kind of looks like it's, uh, it's moving water, right? So, of course, this is not an actual water simulation, but this was all made with geometry nodes. I'm trying to show you what it looks like on the surface. So yeah, I mean, this looks like sort of a, 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 an ocean or lake or body of water just fluently moving. And the best part of this is I am playing it right now on my timeline and it is automatically animating itself. There's no baking. It is doing this in live time, real time that is. And the applications for this are of course very, very broad. I mean, it's up to you what you want to do and get creative with this because I've already done a lot with it. Um, if you want to see how to make this little creature right here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. But let me know in the comments below if that's something you're curious about. And I'll go ahead and make a tutorial on that too. But for now, we're sticking to just the water. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make that right now. Let's go shift A and add in a cube. It doesn't matter what mesh you add in, but a cube works fine. Let's go tab to tab into edit mode and A to make sure we have every vertice selected. Hit X and delete them all. And now let's tab out of edit mode. Okay, let's go into our geometry notes tab if you're not already and click new with that object selected. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and rename this object to something like ocean, something related to the geometry node that you're trying to make. And uh, let's rename the geometry node to something like ocean sim, class sim, something related to whatever it is you're making so it doesn't get too complicated and confusing. Let's go to this geometry group input node and delete it. Goodbye. Good riddance. Shift A, add in a mesh primitive cube. Plug that into the geometry. This is really cool. We are now modeling with geometry nodes, which is a really powerful thing. And I am I, I love it because you can easily like procedurally animate values. And we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do that right now too. First of all, we have this really basic cube. Uh, not a whole lot going on here, but what we want to do is displace this cube in a manner that looks sort of like either a cloth in the wind or a ocean, a, a large body of water kind of moving like waves. And that's what we are gonna do today. But you can use this for like a kite blowing into wind or something. But let's go shift A and add in a set position node. Plug that in right here. And we want to displace this geometry using something a little more creative than just an offset value of you know one or two that'll just kind of move it around and we want it to be kind of creative and want it to flow and a great way to do that is to use a texture so shift a add in a noise texture and this is going to add a lot of different values to our offset as well make sure you plug the color into the offset we just have a displaced cube that looks all messed up. And not only that, it doesn't even look like a wave, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and decrease the scale on this noise texture to something like 0.2. And then let's increase the vertice count on our cube to something like 12. Now you can already see how it kind of started to flow a bit more, displaced more accurately with the uh, noise texture. And that's because we gave it more vertices to displace. I know, simple, stupid, but it makes sense, right? Okay, now let's add in shift A, scene time node. Okay, and now let's plug the seconds value into, oh, it's not there, okay. Change our noise texture from 3D to 4D, and then we'll go ahead and plug our scene time into the W value. Now if we press play, you're already animating with this noise texture, which is super, super cool. Uh, now we want to be able to control this a little bit more. So of course we have these values on the noise texture that we can play with. And I would suggest most of the time to increase the detail here, although it's up to what you're making, of course. Okay, let's go ahead and add in a shift A vector math node. Let's change this from add to subtract. And now what we're gonna be doing here is trying to 
kind of recenter our object back to its origin. And because if you can see here, this yellow dot, this orange dot is the origin of the object. And we have now completely moved it from that position, which we don't really want to do. So to control that, we can just add in a subtract a vector math node. And we'll just move this to a value of something like 0.4 seems to look about right. Kind of get it centered in that position. So let's do shift A and let's add in a subdivide mesh node. Plug that there and change this level from something like one to three. And now you can really see we're starting to get more detail and it's moving really fast. So if we don't want it to move so fast, how can we actually change that? Because it's, it's according to the seconds of our timeline, which is kind of like, how do you manipulate seconds, seconds or seconds? Well, we can actually perform a math operation to the seconds value and mix it with a different value so that we can come out with another value, which will kind of slow this down or speed it up depending on how you want to. So let's go and do this subtract node right here, shift D to duplicate it and plug it right here. So this is a vector math node. Let's change subtract to multiply and if we turn this value to something like 0.1 it'll really slow things down so now we have this like slow motion ocean it's not supposed to rhyme but it did a slow motion ocean kind of moving around okay but we don't want it to be that slow so let's maybe keep this value at 0.5 seems like a decent time scale it doesn't quite look like waves yet. And part of that is because of the shading. We have this flat shading going on. And fortunately, there's an easy way to fix this. It's just shift A, add in a set shade smooth node. And that'll, that'll fix that problem. Except we get this weird sort of edge stuff going around, uh, along on this the perimeter of the cube. You can see uh, it almost looks like a bevel. And I'm not exactly sure why that is. So a way to fix this is to go into your modifier properties and click E, which will add an edge split node. And you can see that our corners are sharp again. Okay, one last thing I wanted to show you is to uh, further manipulate these noise values, the wave texture look on your cube. So to do this, let's duplicate this vector math value and put it in front of our subtract. Let's change this from subtract to scale. And then let's add in a map range node. Plug the result into the scale of the scale node. So if we change this to max value to all the way down to zero, you can see that it completely got rid of our noise displacement. But we of course don't want to do that. But if you want to control the kind of range between zero and one, and so the height of your displacement, you can easily do that using this node. So if we went up all the way to max of like, you know, 6.4, then we're getting this ridiculous shit, which we absolutely don't want. So we want to cap this out at something, say, you know, let's go cap it out at 0.5. And so none of these are ever, none of these waves per se are gonna break 0.5 on this map range node or the uh, uh, offset. And this can kind of bring stability to your object if you're having a problem with that. And so I'm not gonna show you like directly exactly which values to, to use because it's really up to you. Uh, but you can kind of see when I disable this by pressing M to mute it, it kind of like, really warps the entirety of our mesh. And so if we wanted to dampen that a little bit or increase it, we could just add in a map range node and control those values. I hope that makes sense. Now, if you wanted to use a node that's a little more simple, you could, I believe, just replace the map range with a color ramp, although you lose some options. One other thing to consider is maybe you want to scale up this mesh, which is really easy to do. You can, of course, use the size on your cube right here and you can uh, click and then drag down to use all of these values like this or you can manipulate them one by one or you can add in a shift a value node and this will kind of combine x y and z of those and let's change this value to uh i don't know something like six and now that will automatically keep this cubic and you can see as we scale this up the great thing is 
it's still performing our wave operations. Now say you don't want to use a cube anymore. It's no problem at all to just shift A, mess primitives, and uh, add in something like, I don't know, say let, let's go with uh, Icosphere. And let's plug the mesh into the set position node here. Turn up our subdivisions to something like three. I think we'll begin to see an effect here. If we press spacebar, we can see this is now animating as well. Subdivide that maybe one more time. And if you kept, you know, editing and changing these values accordingly, you would eventually be able to get another wavy sort of fluid like uh, animation on this object. So just real quick, let's show you how to do it with a grid. Add in mesh to geometry. We play this, it's just gonna look kind of whack because we don't have enough vertices. Let's turn this up to something like 12. And now you can see how this could be used for something like a cloth sim if you really dialed in these values. Uh, let's just turn this up just a little bit more. And now we essentially got just the top of what was on this cube um, by just using a grid instead, which may be useful. And real quick, I'm going to show you the texture that I made for this object. Turn the specular all the way up, roughness all the way down, increase your transmission to something uh, close to one, really, because you want to be able to see through the water a little bit. And then if you want to get more realistic, what you can do is add in a... Let's go ahead and change to the correct camera. But if you want to get more realistic than this, you actually want the water to... Um, absorb light like it actually does. And the way to do that is to use volume absorption node and plug that into the volume of your material output and change it to something uh, like a turquoise or sort of green blue, something in that range of a color. And I typically keep the density to something like 0.2 because that just seems to work great. But you can see if we turn this up to like 0.1, it starts to, you know, really make an effect on how we see through this water. Cause at the top, this is what it looks like. And as we go down, we are definitely in water guys. We are definitely in water. If you made anything really cool using this video, please let me know by sharing your work with me on Instagram. And let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see um, how to make, where you at? Where, where, where are you at? Other crazy things with geometry nodes. One of the things that I made was actually uh, using this water. super cool all done with geometry nodes i'm loving geometry nodes so far so yeah let me know if you want to see more geometry nodes tutorials in the comments below i'm jordan needham this has been jham 3d and i will catch you guys next time